Hello! Welcome one and all to Puppet History! Today we'll be taking a never winding look at yet another chapter in the heavy, heavy book we call History, while our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Wizard! I'm your beloved host, the Professor. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Oh, Ryan Bagara! Are you ready? Yeah! Special guest! Joyce Lujan, are you ready? I didn't even know you were back. Are we gonna go back to Reno? I mean, now that I'm alive again, I'd love to. Period. Let's go. We okay. gotta get drunk. Oh, hell yeah. All right, then without further ado, let's crack in. Okay, now to begin. Hey, do you deserve a promotion? You have been stuck in the same position for a bit? Time to step up the old corporate ladder? You know who could use a promotion? Your father and I. Oh, oh did you two uh, find jobs? Oh, <laughs> we found jobs everywhere, but other people are already doing them. Your father was just on his way to an interview though. Wow, that's great, Dad, where at? Yeah, the museum, and I'm gonna knock him dead. Hey, honey, quiz me. Greatest strength. My sharp, sharp beak. Greatest weakness. Yeah, my beak is almost too sharp. Perfect. They're gonna hire you on the spot, baby. Your mother's friend Sue works there, and I think she's gonna put in a good word for me. Sue owes me. Uh, let's just say we were sexual kind of lovers in the fucking way. A lovely woman. Anyway, we're off. Good luck with your show, honey. Okay, well, hope it goes well. Uh, Do anyway. you guys just, like, not talk? Off camera? I mean, they're very busy. They got a lot to acclimate to, you know? Hey, man, I just gotta say, there's life after the director says cut. Not for me. Okay. Oh, God. Well, our subject today knew the bureaucratic grind well. She started from the bottom, then steadily worked her way up the ladder at her workplace, which just so happened to be the Chinese Imperial Palace. Our story today is about Wu Zetian, who climbed the unconventional ladder of concubine to China's one and only female emperor. Wow. Wu. Wu! She really Woo. put that poom poom to work. She really did. Now, before we dive in, a familiar disclaimer. The past can be a slippery son of a gun, especially when we're peering back through over a millennia of fact-distorting fog. Sometimes, embracing history means accepting the obnoxious fact that it occasionally gets intertwined with legend. But if you're compelled to furrow your brow at the veracity of certain wonders of history, then heed the call, take the dive, pick up a book and dig deep. And in any case, if what you're looking for is just a verifiable list of chronological facts, well, and maybe your teacher shouldn't have this much blue fur. Okay? Well, you know, it was the olden days. We love drama. Yeah, stuff gets distorted, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like when Ryan said he saw that tube of toothpaste fly across a room. I said it got flung, which it did get flung. Mm. Mm. It got flung across. Mm. Who flung the toothpaste? Uh, nobody. It was uh, like go, on a go, plastic go, 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 bag. Go. You sure it's not a ghost? I, I am sure it's a ghost. That's, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, our story today takes place at the beginning of the Tang Dynasty, which lasted from 618 to 907 and is considered one of the golden ages of Chinese history. The Silk Roads were packed with spicy spices and sexy textiles for trade, diverse religions thrived, and women had an unfortunately rare window of social advancement. Women of the Tang Dynasty were active in political life, rode horses, and often chose their own spouses. Why is that? Uh, you know, things get trendy, things fall out of fashion. <laughs> like rights for women. I guess, yeah. yeah. Social <laughs> rights? Yeah. It's not trendy at the moment. I mean, for much of history, they were like, of course you can't ride a horse. We here at Puppet History <laughs> believe women should be able to ride horses. Yes. Yeah. Wu Shiryue was a lumber merchant who joined the army and worked his way up to improve his social status at the tail end of the Sui dynasty. While in the military, Wu Shiryue served in the army of one Li Yuan. Li Yuan eventually seized control of the Sui government, becoming the first emperor of the Tang dynasty. Wu Shiryue was rewarded for his loyal service to the new emperor with gifts of land, titles, riches, a literal get out of execution free card should he ever need it, and even a new wife after his first wife died. When's appropriate to get a new wife after your first one dies? I would give it like two years. If it's within one year, you were cheating on me. Would you haunt her? A little bit. Yeah. For fun though, because I, I want to be in the drama. If you are a widow and then you get remarried, I've always wondered how do they decide who they're going to get buried next to? <gasps> oh. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm petty. I'd be upset if Mari got buried next to her new husband. I'd be pretty pissed. <laughs> I'd haunt her. I'd haunt a new husband. On the 23rd day of the first moon of 624, this new wife, Lady Yang, gave birth to a daughter, Wu Zhao, in Chang'an City, the capital of the Tang Dynasty. According to one legend, Wu Shiryue wasn't actually Wu Zhao's father. Apparently, Lady Yang was boating with Wu Shiryue on the Jiaoling River when a black dragon emerged from the water. Lady Yang passed out, but dreamt that she had sex with the dragon. One can assume it was very hot. <laughs> Soon after, Lady Yang was pregnant with Wu Zhao. So she fucked a dragon. She fucked a dragon. Would you ever boink a dragon? I feel like they would rip me apart. Yeah. Uh, they would. And if I was Answer doing, the question. It depends. What, what's in it for me? Do I get the dragon's powers? I don't know. Or is that just gonorrhea? <laughs> I think yeah, yeah, that might be something you have to talk to your doctor about. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Back to the STD clinic I go. <laughs> That's the joke you're okay with? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I just say things sometimes. Now, speaking of dragon sex, why did people pretend that this was true? A, people believed a female sovereign couldn't have a mortal father. B, it gave Wu Shiyue cover to divorce Lady Yang for cheating on him. Or C, no one was quite sure where babies came from. Damn, it could be A or B. It could be like misogyny. Yeah. Or misogyny. It's usually a pretty safe bet in the uh, past and uh, present. What if it was true? What if a dragon yeah. had sex? You mean to tell me dragons aren't real? I'm gonna go with A. I'm gonna go with B. I just feel like that is par for the course with that misogynistic kind of era. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be a point for Ryan! Uh, it's misogyny. Um, yes, this sort of mythical retconning happens all the time with leaders. For instance, with the currently ruling Kim family in North Korea. It lends an air of inevitability to a person's reign, helping to deter anyone who thinks, why not me, from sparking a rebellion. Being dragonborn, of course, wasn't Wu Zhao's only mythologizing. So she was like the first Khaleesi. Oh, I guess oh, yeah. so. Is she gonna set the town on fire for no reason? My moon and stars! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be cool if she did have a bunch of drags around her, but uh, as we have said, they are not real. You never know. No, we, Joyce, we do know. No. No, <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> not, simply not real. I'm an intellectual. But what about mysticism, magic? Oh, it's, sure, it's dude. fun. It's fun to believe in dragons, I get it. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> oh, God, ah, it's like I'm breathing fire like a dragon. God, dragons are real, Professor. Oh, Dorothy Ruth, what's up? I'm in the middle of planning a wedding with my hot new lover, Elmer Walter Williams. It's a little stressful, but I just downloaded Dragon City, and it's helping me blow off a little steam. Oh, I didn't know you were getting married. Congrats. Sounds like you got over Stanley Melvin Murphy pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, I dropped him like a hot potato in that he died. Now, do you know what it feels like, Professor? To to wield true power, to command your own dragon empire. Well, in Dragon City, you can collect, hatch, and evolve over a thousand unique dragons. Whoa, that's a lot of dragon babies. These dragons are my new babies. Picture this, it's my wedding day, and nobody has any oat cakes to eat because I never got around to calling the horse caterer. I was too busy having the time of my sexy female horse life building my own customized dream city with magical habitats, buildings, and decorations. I even got into some over-the-top and epic player versus player battles with other dragon masters and my little dragon, Ferocious Fred. You've really got a knack for raising dragons. Oh, I'm the best, baby! Who knew I was such a natural at summoning my powerful dragon skills and strategies to conquer challenging quests and events like the Wizard's Hollow? Oh. Well, I hope your wedding with Elmer Walter Williams goes well. I am thriving, absolutely thriving. I don't miss Stanley Melvin at all. Download Dragon City by clicking the link on the screen or scan the QR code and get a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the rare fortune dragon to get you started. Hey, now that's what I call a treasure. Thanks, Dorothy Ruth, and thanks to Social Point and Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Alrighty, back to my little babies. I'll catch you on the clippity clop, Professor. Alright, <laughs> bye, Dorothy Ruth. <laughs> now, where were we? Ah, oh, yes. When Wu was still a wee little baby, a face reader passed through the capital and read the fortunes of everyone in her family. 
When the face reader saw the baby, not knowing its gender, he reportedly said, If this is a boy, he will be in the highest rank of officialdom with great power. But if it is a girl, she will be the sovereign over the country. Wu Zhao started learning music and the arts at age five. By eight, she was learning poetry, devouring history books, and practicing official etiquette. Things were looking pretty auspicious for Wu. But when she was 11, her father fell ill and died. Dad had two sons from his first marriage, and they did not like Wu Zhao, her sister, or her mother. They inherited their father's estate and treated their stepmother and half-sisters very poorly. Wu Zhao was in a particularly unfortunate position. Because she had learned calligraphy, art, and books, she did not have the cooking and sewing skills sought after in a young woman. She got turned into Cinderella, essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah, kinda. She's too smart for her own good, or for society's good at this point. It reminds me of that movie Cowbells that was on Disney Channel. One Tell of us really about rich that one. Girls super rich and bougie and then they lost all their money and they had to work at like a dairy factory. I was getting more like Handmaid's Tale vibes, but you know. <laughs> In 638, at the age of 14 and with few other options, Wu Zhao got an entry position at the palace as a junior concubine. Now that's no small feat, as author Jonathan Clements writes, quote, admission to the ranks of palace concubines was equivalent to winning a beauty contest of the most gorgeous women in the medieval world. Once employed, Wu gained attention from Emperor Tai Tsong. When the emperor asked the palace women for advice about taming a stubborn horse, Wu said she could handle the beast so long as she was given an iron whip, an iron mace, and a knife. She explained, If the iron whip does not bring him to obedience, I will use the iron mace to beat his head. And if that does not do it, I will use the dagger to cut his throat. She is city girl. Yeah, beat him up, beat him up. Not exactly the best thing though. When you're like, hey, can you tame my horse? Like, yeah, I'll cut its throat. I don't condone animal abuse, but I enjoy female violence. Yes, female violence, A plus. A plus. <laughs> is that what I want to say? While whipping, bonking, then killing a horse hardly feels like it qualifies as handling a horse, Wu's approach nevertheless impressed Tai Tsong. For the next 10 years, Wu served as Tai Tsong's personal secretary, gaining the skills she'd later need to conduct state affairs. In 646, Emperor Tai Tsong fell ill, and per tradition, the crown prince, Li Zhe, stayed with him, feeding the emperor and giving him medicine. There, Li Zhe and Wu began a flirtatious relationship. Now, this was pretty taboo. Any relationship between a concubine and the emperor's son would have been considered incestuous. But Wu was looking for any road for advancement she could. I don't think I could personally do anything sexually with somebody who had done things sexually with my dad. I don't want to think about that, and I'm not going to even talk about it more because now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, we're not here to think about Ryan's dad having no. sex. No, <laughs> no. no. While being the emperor's personal secretary seems like a pretty good place to be, when you're in the concubine department, that is not the way up. Wu was still a fifth rank concubine, basically a maid with dozens of women between her and any role that would lead to significant advancement. Oh, so what was the real way to advancement? A, having the emperor's baby. B, murdering the concubines ahead of her. Or C, there really wasn't any. It's a big, it's a big letter. All right, Ryan, what you got? I got A, I'm not writing anything clever. Joyce, how about you? I also put A, and then I put a little smiley face in the corner. Oh, 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 oh. oh I didn't see that, it's nice. <laughs> well, points to both of you! Because you yeah! both put the right answer! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. Yes, per custom, when you were a concubine and your emperor died, you would shave your head and be relegated to a Buddhist convent for the rest of your life. Sick. Unless you'd managed to get knocked up by the emperor. Only then would special considerations be made, and even those were pretty lousy, usually meaning you'd still be confined to your chambers. What? Yeah, now hang on a sec. It's so exhausting being a per woman. Per custom. Yeah, you better bet your ass I'd be poking holes in that condom. Fuck oh, that, dude. Oh, no, I would just never get up. Yeah, I'm doing what I have to do to get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take that dick like a football. <laughs> okay. okay. Unfortunately for her, Wu never got pregnant by Emperor Tai Tsong. 
So when he died, it was off to the nunnery. However, the flirtatious seeds she'd planted with Li Zhi, now Emperor Gao Zong, began to sprout. The emperor began visiting Wu at the convent, and soon Wu was pregnant with her first son, Li Hong, born in 652. That's what good poom poom do, baby. <laughs> I love women. I love women too. Brian, do you love women? Do you? Yeah, of course. What the fuck? <laughs> hmm, interesting. We're just making sure. Took a minute. That was a test, and you passed. You did. Back in the palace, Emperor Gao Zong's wife, Empress Wang, was upset, but not at Wu. Wang had borne no children for the emperor, but the top concubine, Concubine Xiao, had given Gao Zong a son and two daughters. Empress Wang felt threatened by Xiao and needed a plan to get rid of her. Wang turned her attention then to Wu. Figuring Wu could take Xiao's place as Gao Zong's favorite concubine, Wang sent word to Wu that she should stop shaving her head. You're throwing out a lot of names here. I, 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 yeah. I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? So the wife can't have any kids, unfortunately. Then there's this lady, concubine Zhao. Concubine Zhao is popping them out. But the emperor's like, I'm still feeling boo. Like I've been in love with her since I was like 17 and right. that booty so fat. There's literature that quotes him saying, booty so fat. Right on a scroll. So the empress went to Wu and said, this concubine Zhao, She's gotta go. Right. So I'm gonna need you to stop shaving your head, bit, and come back to the dang palace so that we can keep our man in check. Exactly right. Okay. Four years after entering the convent, Wu was invited back to the palace, now a Jiaoyi or second rank concubine. She'd taken a lot of risks, but they'd paid off with a huge promotion. Still, she wasn't satisfied. She wanted the top spot and she would do anything to get there. In court, Wu was a charming, generous, and friendly presence, winning the favor of the empress and other servants. In addition to Li Hong, Wu gave birth to three more sons, Li Xian, hilariously a second Li Xian, and Li Dan. After those boys, Wu gave birth to a fifth child, a daughter who was reportedly adored by the emperor. Wu, however, saw in the girl an opportunity for yet another promotion in the palace. Ooh, so, what was Wu's plan? A, kill the daughter, then frame Empress Wang for the murder. B, have her daughter marry concubine Xiao's son. Or C, threaten to send the daughter away unless she got promoted. I think if she's really an evil, diabolical baddie. Okay, okay, Ryan, what do you got? I'm gonna go with A, you know, assassinate the, the wife. I'm not gonna erase my glossary here. Okay. Joyce, what do you got? I also got A. More double A's, uh, batteries. Bat put, let's do our battery graphic here. A, 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 Oh, I see. No. I don't know. That's a battery. That's a new one this season. We're having a lot of fun with it, as you can tell. I can tell. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out via the magic of theater. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Bye bye. I love these plays. Yeah, sure. She seems like a pretty uh, diabolical lady. I think she's gonna. I mean, if I had the pop pussy to get social advancement in my society, I would turn into the absolute devil. <clears throat> oh, there she is, my second rank concubine, Wu, mother of my most recent daughter, who I love very much and is the apple of my eye. Yes, that's who I am, the loving mother of that girl you just described. Uh, wh where is that daughter? I do love her so much. Oh, she's uh, right over there, super alive, I presume, since your wife, Empress Wong, was just hanging out with her, <laughs> alone. Yeah. Well, how specific of a circumstance. Yep, let me just go check on her. Oh my god, oh my god. Our daughter's been like strangled or something and is dead now, oh no. What? How could this have happened? Oh man, you oh, you don't think it was like your wife who did it and strangled her out of jealousy, do you? Man, something like that would be so bad. That would be very bad. Oh god, that's it. Empress Wong is now dismissed. Same with concubine Xiao. Wu? You're my empress now. Oh, hell yeah, that plan worked like a charm. The what worked like a huh? Uh, nothing. Oh, shoot, what a bummer about our daughter, though. Wow, that was fun. Cool to see the emperor. Surprised he was wearing what he was wearing. I thought he, with the amount of sex that guy was having, he was wearing one of those rip-away pants that basketball players wear just. Or like one of those hydration suits from yeah. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, points to both of you, yeah. Hell yeah, you guys are doing great this episode. Good stuff. Now, apologies if you thought our story was all horse bonking and dragon sex, but Wu allegedly strangled her own daughter and framed Wong, thereby installing herself as Empress. 
That's yeah. really sad. I'm sorry to the daughter. It's always good to make extras. Yeah. yeah. That's my theory. That's why I make 13 cookies instead of 12. Wait, is that why they do a baker's dozen? Yeah, it's, well, it's because you eat the extra cookie as the baker. What? Wait, is that I why? I have no idea. Wait, are you, are you serious? Is that yeah. why? Yeah, that's yeah, why it's called a baker's it. dozen, so the baker could eat the cook. To see how it tastes? This is a bit, right? Do I get no. a jelly? Wait, no, you get a jelly bean for now. I didn't even know that. I feel like everyone knows that. No, I, I just that. thought they made 13 because it's like, oh, a little discount. I mean, I could be wrong. Now you're making me doubt that I'm right. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Wow, I know I make an extra so that I can have it. Cause I'm- You're, you're a little piggy. Better. Yeah, I am a little piggy. And also maybe I can use it to leverage things. And I'll have the same approach when it comes to children. Now, some stories continue, saying that Wu then had Wong and Xiao's limbs cut off, and then their bodies tossed into a vat of wine where they would drown since, you know, they could no longer swim. But those are probably just legends, right? At least they died drunk. I guess. Damn. That would be my strategy. If that was a pool of tequila though, Oh no, I love tequila. I just get a whiffer and then I could like punch a wall. A whiffer? <laughs> now, putting aside the horrific way she got there in 655, Wu Zhao was 31 years old and the Empress of China. Not everyone was stoked about this new lady sitting next to Emperor Gao Zong, especially those in the court who had worked for his dad. As I mentioned before, folks were creeped out at the idea of an emperor having any interaction with his dad's concubine. Sensing the discomfort, Wu worked quickly to solidify her position. Wu built a system of informers and used them to get rid of rivals and potential enemies, often with torture or forcing them to commit suicide. Yikes. She had the heads, and only the heads, of two rebellious princes brought to the palace. Wu also had Gao Tsong depose the crown prince and instead make Wu's eldest son, Li Hong, the new crown prince, ensuring no one had any big ideas about getting rid of her by killing her hubby. Well, look, she's obviously not born into a great situation. On the other hand, though, she is a monster. Yeah. But I'm still looking at her like, damn, that's a bad bitch. Am I toxic? Just imagine if this lady was born a man. Very scary. Her power more secure with each passing execution, Wu suddenly had yet another stroke of good fortune. Gao Zong uh, suffered a stroke. Uh, now blind, Gao Zong entrusted all government affairs to his wife, who kept consolidating her power with ruthless tactics. When her cousins and niece visited the palace in 666, Wu felt the niece drew too much attention from Emperor Gao Zong. Wu poisoned her niece's meal, which killed her, then blamed her cousins, who were executed, allegedly exacting revenge for when the cousins were mean to her mother and sister after her father's death. People don't forget. They never forget. Yeah. Do a kindness to everyone you meet, you know? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, maybe they'll poison you. This is very helpful to my anxiety who thinks anything I do wrong is gonna be remembered forever. While she was ruthless when it came to holding on to power, the actual ruling she did wasn't so bad. In 674, Wu wrote a memo to her husband, basically laying out a bunch of suggested government reforms to increase agricultural production, decrease taxes, improve morale, encourage governmental criticism, and appoint officials based on ability instead of birth. The emperor agreed, and the new laws were extremely influential for Chinese society moving forward. So she just had to do all that bad stuff so she could start doing some good stuff. Sure. Sounds like politics. This same year, after her husband changed his own title to Heavenly Emperor, Wu's title also improved to Heavenly Empress, finally becoming the Wu Zetian history most remembers her as. Ze meaning example, and Tian meaning heaven. Mm. What were their backup ideas? Amazing Emperor? Big Emperor? Epic Emperor. <laughs> Big sexy guy. Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> now, rumors continued to swirl about Wu using her own family to consolidate power. Wu's first son, the crown prince Li Hong, didn't listen to his mother and preferred doing his own thing. When he died in 675 at the young age of 24, some suspected Wu of poisoning her own son to install a more obedient crown prince. Her next son, the first Li Xian, was made crown prince, but only for a few years. In 680, palace guards were sent to search Li Xian's residence, where they found a bunch of armor and weapons, supposedly a sign that Li Xian was planning a coup. A pretty odd thing for the crown prince to do. Li Xian was confined to the palace, and his younger brother, also named Li Xian, was made crown prince. So she just hid a Markham so she could say empress as long as possible. Yeah, basically. 
She had kids so she could take her day out on them, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I guess. In 683, Heavenly Emperor Gaozong died, yeah. elevating that Li Xian to the title of Emperor Zhongsong. In Gaozong's will, he explicitly stated that, quote, if Zhongsong cannot decide on any important national or military affairs, he should go to Heavenly Empress, who will make final decisions. Basically telling his son, listen to your mother. Wu was 59 at the time, and now the Empress Dowager. By then, she'd had a lot of experience running China, and had grown an eye for seeing where potential threats could come from. With her son now the Emperor, she saw one challenger in particular looming in the wings. Ooh, so! Who was Wu nervous about? A, the first Li Xian, the former crown prince still confined in the palace. B, her youngest son, Li Don, who was jealous he wasn't on the throne. Or C, Emperor Zhongsong's wife, Empress Wei, who was a schemer just like Wu. Right, I'm gonna go with C. My thought is the only person a powerful woman would fear is another powerful woman. That or her part. daughter-in-law. Yeah, man. I also put C. Oh, but oh, oh, oh. C dogs! Or 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 come on, Ryan, we're friends now. Best bit on the show, and I'm glad it's still here this season. It's definitely better than the battery one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're working on that one. Um, okay, well, once more, we're gonna find out via the magic of theater. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Bye bye. I just love when he puts a little puppet show on. You know? <clears throat> Emperor Shongzong, you wanted to see me? Uh, yikes, that feels so formal, Mom. How about you just call me Emperor Sun? <laughs> okay, Emperor Sun, what can I do for you? Well, you know how Dad said I should ask you if I'm stuck on a decision? Well, I'm stuck. <laughs> My wife, Empress Wei, she wants to make her dad a prime minister, which I think is a good idea. Oh, you do, do you? Yeah, but the current prime minister say that sucks, so I'm like, uh, I'm the emperor. I mean, I could give my father-in-law the whole empire if I wanted. I mean, you know? Hmm, I see. Yeah, so, uh, what, what do you think I should do? Well, hon, I think you should be deposed. Huh? Yeah, you can't joke about stuff like giving away the empire. That's, like, really bad. So I'll tell you what, your little brother is the emperor now, and you're gonna be placed in confinement. I hope you think about how much this hurts me to do. Wait, are you serious? Yes. Guards! Oh, no, no. Oh, we were wrong. We were totally wrong. Dang, I really wanted those jelly beans. Whoa! No, you you guys both got that right! What? What? Yeah! She was nervous about her, her daughter-in-law. Well, we were right then. Yeah. yeah. You get your worthless jelly beans. Grants uh, to you. I'm so excited. Yes. Rightly nervous about her conniving mother-in-law, the new Empress Wei tried to consolidate her own power by installing her dad as a prime minister. Wu saw what she was getting at from a mile away. She'd stacked the court with loyalists herself. When Emperor Zhongzong joked about the matter, his mom had him deposed and replaced with her youngest son, Li Don, who became Emperor Ruizong. Emperor Zhongzong had only lasted a couple months. She don't got no more kids, right? She's running out of them, certainly. This is the last one. Are you an only child, Professor? I think so. Oh, I was gonna ask, do you think you're the favorite? I'd go 50-50, I think I'm the favorite of one of my parents. Okay, what about this? If your mom had to pick one of you to become emperor? Oh, she'd pick me. I think she'd pick yeah? me. Yeah? I think she'd pick me. Well, Jake's, you know, he's a dentist. He's got dentist He's also stuff a dipshit, do. so. Do you think you're your parents' favorite too? So I have two sisters. Same question, who would she, uh, your, your parents elect emperor if they had to choose between the three of you? That's a good way to figure out who's the favorite. She'd pick my little sister. <laughs> <laughs> By this point, Emperor Ruizong had noticed a pattern. You mess with mom, bad shit happens to you. Best be the emperor in name alone and just let her run things. Meanwhile, Wu kept improving the pool of courtiers by letting anyone apply, not just noble families who didn't love the idea of a woman running things. Now, during this time, Wu Zetian squashed a few minor rebellions, but for the most part, by 690, she had basically destroyed anyone who would consider challenging her. The loyalists she'd installed started clamoring for her to just say, fuck it, and become emperor in her own right. Now, she resisted at first, possibly just so she didn't look like she wanted it so bad, but in 690, she was crowned Holy Empress Wu, the first and last sole female sovereign China would ever see. Woo! Woo! I mean, it took a lot of murder, death, trauma, yeah. abuse. Yeah. But you know what? I she hope, got that chair. Yeah. I hope it brought you happiness, boo-boo. We're proud of her. Yeah. 
We endorse everything that she's done. Don't I don't do that. that. I don't, don't, I don't, don't endorse. Don't Ooh, but wait a minute. What about Emperor Ruizong? A. Oh yeah, she poisoned him. B. He died of pneumonia, but no one had even noticed until two weeks later. Or C. What about him? <laughs> I mean, what do you guys got? I'm gonna put C. What about him? Because who cares? Right. Exactly. I put B because you were so specific that it was pneumonia. Two weeks. Well, that's gonna be a jelly bean for Ryan. Yeah! What about him indeed? It appears Emperor Ruizong, Mama's perfect little pushover, just kinda let it happen. Honestly, probably the smartest guy in this story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's called making a business decision. <laughs> yeah, he's read the tea leaves. He knows how this goes. I mean, he probably watch or kill his sister. Minding your business. Yeah. It saves lives. Having started as a fifth class concubine, Wu Zetian was now at age 66, the most powerful person in China. And she intended to keep it that way. To ensure corruption and nepotism didn't infiltrate her court, tests for courtiers were graded with the names covered, ensuring a lack of bias. Well, that's all fine and good, but when you're at the top with basically no competition, one of the only things left to do is inflate your own mythology. In 693, Holy Empress Wu became Golden Wheel Holy Empress Wu. The next year, she added Superior to the beginning, implying she was better than all past emperors. In 695, she added Merciful, maxing out at Merciful Superior Golden Wheel Holy Empress Wu. Though, she would soon remove Merciful Superior. I mean, enough's enough, right? Yeah. Bam! Okay. Oh. Oh! Hey, here's a fun little thing. Grant yourself a title. Go big. The most formidable title between the two of you gets a little jelly bean. Oh. That's a lot. Really hype yourself up here. Ryan, tap into that bottomless well of confidence that you have. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, what do you got? I put the decent, pretty okay, honestly mid, and tolerable Emperor Ryan Bergara. That's about what I expected. I don't like the way you talk about this. So. I think that's a pretty accurate, honestly mid. Honestly mid. I don't mid. think you're mid. <laughs> we gotta work on the self-love talk. I put the powerful, beautiful Lily of the River, goddess bad bitch, Emperor Louis Jean. Lily of the River! Well, we're gonna give a jelly bean for Joyce. <laughs> That's, uh, you I think, are not I, think I deserve a jelly bean for my honesty. Deep down, though, you seem like you don't think you deserve a jelly bean. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from inventing titles, Wu continued to serve her citizens well. In one instance, when she asked a prime minister how her people were faring in the winter weather, the minister told her she didn't have to be concerned about such things. That guy was fired. Yay! Between 700 and 701, she oversaw the construction of beautiful Buddhist temples, statues, and pagodas around the country. Wu would hold celebrations to worship Buddha in the capital, and then have 10 cartfuls of coins tossed everywhere on the ground for the people to scramble and pick up. Making it rain may not be a core tenet of Buddhism, but who's gonna say no to free cash in this economy? You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Uh -huh. That seems benevolent, but also something about throwing money on the ground and watching people scramble for it seems a little uh, nasty, hilarious. Right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know. I would definitely get drunk with her. She might kill me by the end of the night, but it might be worth it. It might be the best night of drinking of your life. That's yeah. true. I could see you hyping her like the That's whole night. The thing. And Boy, I think, damn him! Yeah, you know, she'd probably. <laughs> yeah. Now, late in her life, Wu, strangely, started taking advice from a pair of goofballs, former singers, the Jong Brothers. The court and senior officials really resented these two knuckleheads, and when 80-year-old Wu became sick and confined to her bed in 704, the time was finally ripe to make a move. In February of 705, some generals and leading ministers seized the palace, murdered the Jongs, and had a heart-to-heart -heart with Wu. What did they want? A, they wanted Wu to kill herself. B, they wanted Wu to cede the throne back to Emperor Zhongzong. Or C, they wanted Wu to cede the throne back to Emperor Ruizong. I guess the isolation guy, because cinematically, it, it's good when you know somebody from the past come up and say, here's your retribution. Yeah. All right, Ryan, what you got? I guess A, they wanted her to commit suicide because sure. they wanted her dead. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Joyce, you're going with? B. A jelly bean for Joyce! Oh, I should have just went with B. 
Haha, <laughs> yes, at least Zhang Zong was less of a pushover during his few weeks on the throne. With her close advisors murdered and she herself quite sick, Wu had little choice but to abdicate the throne. Emperor Zhang Zong bestowed on his mother her final title, Holy Empress Zetian Wu the Great. Less than a year later, on the 26th day of the 11th moon, Wu Zetian died at age 81. It's the women that have the most violent pasts and do the most wildest things that live a long life. Like, remember that bisexual pirate lady in yeah. the first thing we did together? Yeah. She lived a long life for pirates. She did. She did. I kind of love that, but also am afraid of that at the same time. Wu Zetian's final will called for a giant blank tombstone to be set in front of her tomb, which would let the future judge her, not the present. To this day, it's still blank, so I guess judging her is up to us. <laughs> well, what's your judgment, folks? You were wild, you were scary, you were murderous, evil lady. I think she was just a nasty, nasty lady. Okay. In both, in good and bad. You could be nasty and be like, oh damn, that was nasty. Should we call them up and tell them to engrave that into her headstone now? I wonder how much that would cost. I don't know. Nasty, nasty lady. If it's $50, lady. I'll do it. Sure. Was Wu Zetian a brutal, power-hungry schemer? Oh, you betcha. Lots of powerful rulers back then were, but they get less shit for it because they're dudes. At the end of the day, her people thrived, and Wu's changes to Chinese society can still be felt today, taking power from military and political aristocracies and instead placing it in a scholarly bureaucracy where any capable person could contribute. She stabilized a new dynasty, developed the country economically, promoted literature and art, and lifted up the position of women in society. Perhaps her greatest legacy, however, is her story itself. With enough determination and a willingness to do whatever it takes, there ain't nothing Wu can't do. Including killing her kids. Yeah, you know. We've all done it. <laughs> yeah, what? we have. No, I guess we haven't. Yeah. Well, that concludes our history lesson. I'm gonna head backstage and crunch some numbers. In the meantime, enjoy this special performance from the magical dragon that had sex with Wu's mother. Wow, what a get. I'll be right back. Whoa. I know I'm hot. Sorry if my confidence stings. But feast your eyes on my scaly skin. Then my titillating leathery wings. Dragons have got a habit of inspiring dread But they are not no fluffy and particularly good and bad Dragons are bad at sex And that's, that's what, what sets, sets me apart but From the rest cause in my heart I wanna please my lover And so I get cheese by the other Dragons cause I don't want none of the good for nothing Animalistic reptile fucking Ugh, woo, say John It's true, I had sex with your mom It came to pass, it was consensual And she meant the world to me And now, look at you A whole nation under your roof and show your kids and some kids But you did what you did Because you do what you gotta do Word gets around All the other dragons giving me guff But deep down I think they're insecure Knowing the dragon asses ain't, ain't enough Well I still get down With humans for a casual bone But out of all Kids outside, there's only one who sits upon a throne. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm kind of a deadbeat dad. I could have done more to help out, but I didn't fit inside your house. But I'm really proud of you. How you snatch that crown, and you pretty much seem to be okay with killing any dipshits who stood in your way. Yeah, it's true, I cut cheeks with your mom We went hard, we got that boat to rock yeah. And her husband watched us too And look at you now All your enemies in the ground And sure you killed some kids But you did what you did Because you do what you gotta do We had 
text on the board. Your mom and I had sex on the board. Sex on a boat. Your mom and I had sex on a boat. Wow, it's already over? That's crazy. That was really good. And it's consensual. I love that part. That was a fucking great song. So good. <laughs> Loved it. Whoa, whoa, now that was a song. Somebody tossed that guy in horny jail. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> horned up for this Yikes. episode. Yikes. Okay, now on to today's winner. Oh, oh gosh. You know, I don't know how that dang algorithm did it, but I, I'm really having a hard time running the equations back here. This show is an absolute mess this season. Uh, maybe I can... Uh... Well, that didn't go well. Oh, you guys are back. I, I take it you didn't get the job at the museum? He sure didn't. Uh, everybody screamed. They tried to put us in a glass box, and Sue, uh, she's apparently dead, and your mother ate a guy. <sighs> what are we gonna do? Maybe we should have just died with the rest of the dinosaurs. Well, no, no, no. Now, hold on a minute, Mom and Dad. What if what if I got you both jobs here at, at the show? Son, listen to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that make us, uh, what was it, honey? Uh, the, the Nepo, Nepo babies. babies. Nepo babies. How do you guys know what Nepo babies are? Yeah, because we met a nice lady named Liza Minnelli on our way to the museum. She caught us up on a lot. She's a dear friend now and a potential throuple candidate. Oh, oh, cool. Well, I think in this case we can make an exception. Dad, how about we bring you on as a camera op? And Mom, since you've been doing such a good job of making the little coveted caps and picking the history wizard, how about you become our official scorekeeper? <gasps> I'd be great at that. This week, you get a million points, son. What? Is that true? I missed out on you getting a million history points? Hey, that's it. I'm never applying for a job ever again. No, uh, again. The contestants get the points. Uh, was, Mom, well, just go on and pick one of the contestants. Okay. Eeny, meeny, money. Oh, Joyce! Ah! Looks like you're going to be our history wizard today. Ah. Thank but you Mom, so I, I think Mom also made a coveted cap for you, Ryan. So That's come cool. get your coveted caps. It's really neat. You oh, guys keep uh, keep having these conversations on air. I love it. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, here you go. Oh my uh, gosh. The mom, uh, once again, to be clear, it's history wizard. I'm a history wizard. And then beef is spelled with a B. I don't know what happened there. Oh, is it not? Yeah, we lost some of the letters, so I just improvised. I ate two of them. Oh, it kind of looks almost like queef. Okay. That's kind of fun. I've oh. always wanted a hat with queef on my forehead. Well, you'll get the hang of it, I'm sure. We'll get that fixed for next time. Um, Joyce, thank you so much for being here today. Ryan, thanks for being a friend. And for the rest of you, thanks for watching Puppet History, where the details are always a little fuzzy. We'll see you next time. Farewell! <laughs> Yay. And a big thanks to Social Point and Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Get started today by downloading Dragon City by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code and get a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the rare fortune dragon to get you started. We had sex on a boat. Your mom and I had sex on a boat.